Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Florida PTA for another one of our Road to Success workshops. My name is Karen Mazzola. I am the Vice President of Educational Development, and I work with the team uh, consisting of our Chair and Vice Chair for Mental Health, Wellness, and Safety, Asia Claremont and Shelly Pedraza. We will put them on in just a couple minutes, as well as their committee members. Um, Asia, that doesn't look like you. Uh, Michelle. <laughs> but that's me. I would like to introduce some of our board members that are on this call. There have been four people that entered the room, so I'm going to admit them real quick. And from what I can see, in order on my screen is our chair of our awards committee, Denise Nicholas. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for this amazing presentation. Really excited. Thank you so much, Denise. And our Florida PTA secretary, Melanie Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, I'm off camera, I'm driving. Thank you, Melanie. Kelly Crumbaker, our president of our Orange County Council, PT. Recording in progress. Hi there. Hi, Kelly. Melanie Gamble gave an excellent presentation last Wednesday on media and marketing. Okay, so we just did three minutes. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, Alvin Ganey. Someone is, um, if they could mute yourself, we hear another presentation. <laughs> Alvin Ganey, our chair of our Leadership Development Committee. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for taking the time out of your day to uh, join us for RTS. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much, Alvin. I don't see them on yet, but I saw where one of our office staff, Kim Adansky, was uh, joining and was in the waiting room. That is all I'm seeing right now. And so without further ado, we will begin. I introduce you to Asia and Shelly. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Asia Clermont, and I am the chair for the Committee of the Mental Health, Wellness, and Safety. And um, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys um, talking a little bit and having an overview about ACEs and going beyond ACEs. So with that, I'm going to let our co-chair, uh, Vice Chair Chelly Pedraza. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, so we're going to go ahead and every single thing that we do, we want to make sure that we're including the PTA mission. So I'm going to go ahead and just remind everyone of our mission. PTA's mission is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. Every child, one voice, cada niño una voz. Thank you, Shelly. And um, thank you very much for that. And yes, we are the voice for every child. And we're gonna talk today about adverse childhood experience, ACE. And it's not an ACE of card, like you go to the casino, but what is ACE? What that stands for? And ACE is adverse childhood experiences. They're a stressful, stressful event that a child experienced before the age of 18. And those events have a way to translate into um, later years in their life, causing them to hinder some areas in their whereabouts, like socially, mentally, physiologically, and their predominant uh, exposed in three dimension, in the home, in the community, and as well in the school setting. Although there are many uh, stresses that people go through, when a child experiences ACEs, those are the kind of stresses that they cannot overcome. And it's difficult to, and it's like they're carrying this load into the backpack because things go in and they don't know how to either diffuse them, how to work with them. And instead of it, they compile them. And we know that that can include abuse. Abuse come in many shape or forms. 
physically, emotionally, and even sexually. Bully is a type of abuse. Um, also comes the neglect. And neglect can be physical or emotional. Um, and we, the child experience that everywhere they go. It starts at home, translates to school, and also out in the community. So it is, we have to be cognizant of our little ones and the experiences that they have in those um, dimensions and those um, atmosphere. We decided to bring, to expand beyond ACEs. And as we mentioned, it's not just the abuse that happened at home. It's not just the neglect. It's not just um, the dysfunction of a household, but ACEs goes a little bit in that wheel, that graphic kind of really represents what is going beyond ACEs. We see the conventional ACEs. It's just the stress that compiles up in the child's life. Then we see how it spans to the abuse, the neglect, the dysfunctionality of a home. And then we see how that expands into what the community, the school setting, how they, um, when you are a minority and you experience racism, um, any ism, is also an adverse experience for any child that doesn't know how to navigate and they are the, fir the first encounter with um, the outside world. And if it happens at home and they, they found it outside, it's a very hard for the child to reconcile those experiences. Okay, so as... go ahead. No. Okay. So why do ACEs matter? Children who experience ACEs often have a higher level of stress than children who do not experience ACEs. And the reality is most of us will experience, have some experience with ACEs. Um, high levels of stress can lead to serious health problems in adolescence and throughout adulthood, like depression, diabetes, heart disease, as well as increased likelihood of engaging in high-risk behaviors such as misusing drugs like tobacco and alcohol. The impacts of ACEs sometimes do not show up until many years later. So you might not necessarily see it right then and there, but down the road as they get older, you will start seeing some of the impacts. The more ACEs a person has, the greater the risk of experiencing health problems and challenges in school, work, and relationships. You know, and this is just um, a little bit of more information about why ACEs matter. So it can affect your mental health and your physical health. So um, the little, the child here has, you know, different things that are going on. So he has, um, he has reduced ability to respond, learn or figure things out, um, lower tolerance for stress, increased problems with learning and memory, increased stress, hormones, which affects the body's ability to fight infection. So it impacts every single part of the person. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know how excited y'all will be about doing this, um, but we are going to take the test. So this is something for you personal. You do not have to share your numbers. Um, this is just for you to know where you're at with within the mm -hmm. ACEs. And then afterwards, I mean, we're not going to just destroy your life. We're going to let you know what things you can do to help yourself out afterwards okay so like don't think like this is like oh my gosh they're gonna make me depressed no um we're gonna go through it and then at the end we're gonna kind of talk through some stuff so we're gonna take the assessment we're gonna do the cdc recommended ace test it's only 10 questions all you have to do is just give yourself one point for each yes answer okay so grab a piece of paper a pen um and just give yourself one point for each yes and remember, we're not, um, we just related information. We're not diagnosing anybody. We want to yeah. put that out there. We're not expert in the con in the matter. We're just reporters. So, and we just want to share this so that we can all participate and see where we're going with this. Yeah. And it really does. It's, it's a good, it's a good overview of kind of like where you're at. Um, I was actually super surprised. I had way more ACEs than I thought I did. So when I took the test, I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but this is something that, you know, it is good to, to do. So, all right. So one point okay. for each yes. Before you were 18, 
Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often swear at you, insult you, put you down, or humiliate you, or act in a way that made you afraid you might be physically hurt? So it's just a yes or no. Before 18. Okay. Question two. Did a parent or other adult in the household often or very often push, grab, slap, or throw something at you, or ever hit you so hard that you had marks or were injured? Did an adult or person at least five years older than you ever touch or fondle you or have you touch their body in a sexual way? or attempt to actually have oral, anal, or vaginal intercourse with you? Number four, did you often or very often feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special? or your family didn't look out for each other, feel close to each other or support each other. Okay, number five, we're halfway there. Did you often or very often feel that you didn't have enough to eat, had to wear dirty clothes and had no one to protect you? Or your parents were too drunk or high to take care of you or take you to the doctor if you needed it. Number six, was a biological parent ever lost to you through divorce, abandonment, or other reason? Number seven, was a parent often or very often pushed, grabbed, slapped, or had something throw at you by a domestic or at him or at her by a domestic partner, or sometimes often or very often kicked, beaten, hit with a fist, or hit with something hard, or ever repeatedly hit over at least a few minutes, or threatened with a gun or a knife? Number eight, do you live with anyone who has a problem, drinker or alcoholic, or who use street drugs? Number nine, was a household member depressed or mentally ill, or did a household member attempt suicide? Number 10, did a, did a household member go to a prison? As you can see, the final questions are very hardcore questions. Imagine our little ones that they experience those things. Imagine for a minute how they would feel as Shelly goes through the scoring um, in regards to the ACEs. Okay, so we're going to take a second so you can all add up your score. Um, and look, it's, I think, especially with PTA, I want you all to understand that, you know, one of the things that makes us the amazing advocates that we are mm -hmm. is because we know what it's like. Many of us do know what it's like to deal with some of these issues, um, whether it's one, two, three, four or more. You know, you do know what it's like to maybe be hungry or maybe have, you know, issues at home. And that is part of why we do PTA. And we're making sure that we're advocating for these babies and making sure that they have less ACEs 
than, you know, than maybe some of us have growing up. I'm admitting somebody real quick, Karen. Okay. So ho hopefully you all added your numbers up. I'm hoping that they're low, but it's okay if it's high. You know, it is one of those things that you can still work on it as an adult and try to, you know, get some of that stress down that has impacted your body. So score and Asia's going to go into that. So scoring. Um, so pretty much the higher the number on your score, the more likely you are to be in poor health. Um, studies find that those adverse childhood experiences actually put you at higher risk for heart, lung, and liver disease, obesity, diabetes, depression, and substance abuse. Okay, so on that bottom little graph, you can see that, you know, if you have zero, then this is, you know, like you have like the percent with um, problem. So like you have liver disease and COPD, you know, that it's, if you have one, you're probably pretty much around the same area. Um, two, just a little bit more, but you see the big differences when you get to three and then anything over four, you see a, a major difference. Um, average childhood experiences are the single greatest unaddressed public health threat facing our nation today. And that's one of the reasons that we felt that it was super important to make sure that we covered this. 67% uh, of the population has at least one ACE. So when you think about it, 67% of your students have at least one of these situations going on at home. That's a big number. Um, oh gosh, I changed my screen here. Uh, so four or more ACEs, it actually, it's you're three times more likely um, to have an increased level of lung disease and adult smoking, 11 times the level of intravenous drug use, 14 times the number of suicide attempts, four times more likely to have begun intercourse by age 15, 4.5 times more likely to develop depression and two times more likely to deliver, um, to develop liver disease. Uh, the big number here is if you have six or more, um, you, it says that you can die 20 years earlier than those who have none. And a big part of that is because it affects your, your body. It affects your way of life, your decisions, um, and it can cause chronic illness and other things. So one eighth of the population have more than four ACEs. So go back to your school populations. One eighth of your kids have m more than four ACEs. So that's a huge number. Thank you. And um, that ACEs is something that change your DNA, change the way and it's scientifically proven because when you're so stressed out and you don't know how to release that, that lingers and move around. So what stages does it move to? If it's not dealt with in the childhood, it's going to go to adolescent. And then if it's not dealt at that moment in time, then it's going to go to adulthood. And um, the DNA get altered and you can generationally pass it through to your children when you have because your DNA has already been altered by that stress, causing you physiological damage mentally, uh, mental conditions, and so forth. So childhood um, adversities are abuse, neglect, related to stress in, in the home, when they get yelled at, when they see mom and dad fighting, when they don't eat, all the stuff causes them stress. And um, I have a seven-year-old, and just one little thing for her is a big thing. And when she sat for one little minor thing that I might consider minor, that now her day was ruined. So they go through life like that because they don't know how to calibrate, how to really filter what is going around them. And we have to be cognizant of that and mindful of it. Then um, adolescent outcomes and early initiation, substance abuse. Uh, we see a lot of teenagers that have been um, killed by overdose, suicide, um, suicidability, Pregnancy, we have a lot of teens pregnant, mental illness, sexual risky behavior, they are promiscuous before time. And that is because it was not dealt in a childhood stage. Then from there, it goes, it moves into the adult um, outcome. So who they are as an adult, are the people that are your coworker. Those are the people that are our colleague in PTA. Those are the people that we see in any aspect in the supermarket, any interaction we have with an adult, we have, to, this is gonna help us to be mindful of maybe 
when you see someone upset, maybe it's something more than just what it meets the eye. Um, with the adult, it goes to the chronic disease, substance use, obesity, um, lack of exercise, um, STD, HIV risk, sexual risk behavior, mental illness, suicidability, emotional dysregulation. And this is a big one because they cannot emotionally regulate things um, because they're going, it's so embedded. And that's when the DNA gets altered and gets changed. Now we're going to see how ACEs affect the individual academically, emotionally, and within their career, um, career, within their career. Academically, the children, they start struggling in school. They don't want to participate. They start having behavioral issues. And you might see a child that acts up, but that's the only way that they can, they can vent out. Um, they don't want to they don't want to do nothing with the school related. Um, they don't, some of them, they just go to school and they say they don't want to be there. Some throw a tantrum at home because they don't want to be in a school. And we have to be mindful of that and just be cognizant of our children around us in school. Emotionally, feeling upset or angry. Um, kids who experience ACEs, they have a lot of anxiety it, or they get sad very easily or they get angry very easily. Sometimes they even go like that with her hand or they bite things because they don't know how to regulate. Um, they have trouble making socially. It's hard for them to make friends. Um, it is very hard for them to, when they experience something or a rejection at school or in the community to bounce back. So which makes it that they hold on to that. It goes to, it's transferred to the career, impact the future, what, how they do at their works, at jobs. I mean, when they go for an interview, um, they have difficulties in facing um, people. It's hard for them to make a good um, choices or behave good when they are at work or even do what is expected for them to do. Um, they get a lot of issues, poor performance at work. Um, and therefore, they don't make, they don't get good jobs because they don't, they're not consistent. They don't stay with one because they just go from job after job because they, don't, they haven't learned to regulate and they haven't learned to actually deal with the problems that affect their performance. And therefore we see a lot of poverty due to that as well. With that, I want to give you some mindfulness exercises. But first of all, I want to say, what is mindfulness? It is the practice of focusing and being aware of the present moment. We have, we are conditioned that we always live in the past or we always live in the future, but we do not live in the present. So mindfulness is that Purpose is that you purposely, you are proactively making sure that you live in the present moment. There's some practical mindfulness exercise that can also help that can be implemented every day and we can share with our children in the school setting. We can do it ourselves. Um, how uh, can we practice that? We have a mindful observation. Let's say that um, you are in a setting and you just purposely look at something that you have not seen, pay attention to it before, and you start just really watching it for minutes and notice everything about it. And notice how is that different? What color does it have? And focus on that in your mind at that moment in time. And that will help you to regulate if you're stressed out because now your mind shift to, instead of focusing on the adverse situation, is focusing on something that you are observing. And that is a good, um, easy um, thing, exercise to practice and share with our PTA units. Self-care. Um, the self-care is a deliberate um, action that you take to take care of yourself. And every time I hear self-care, I think about the oxygen mask um, approach that every time we go to a plane, um, the first thing that they said, you take the oxygen mask and you put it on yourself and then you help the, ne the person next to you. 
And that's what is self-care. Self-care is our oxygen mask that we can put first in ourselves to make sure that we nurture our mental, our emotional, and our physical well-being. It is to find practical ways to take care of ourselves. We have to take the minute or two or maybe five minutes to start really taking care of us so that way we can be we can have a long um, expectancy of life and help others. There are some practical exercises that I want to share with you. For example, staying active, do some type of exercise, go to the gym, walk, eating healthy, getting enough sleep, um, do something that you enjoy, uh, find a hobby if you don't have any, spend time with loved ones. Um, I remember that I'm not a painter. And one day that I was in this class and I said, you know what, I want to do, I want to start doing canvas. And I found how relaxing it was for me to paint. And even though I didn't know, I focused on my purpose and my mind was full of what I was doing. And I had a beautiful um, lighthouse. It's beautiful to me. Maybe it's not beautiful to others, but it was something that it distressed me out. So find something that maybe you didn't try before in create a hobby or something or spend time with loved ones, friends, do something that will bring you out to, um, to distress yourself. And we can teach that to our kids. So these exercises that I have shared with you can help the children and adults as well, as well to feel less stressed, to be more resilient. And the key of any success is consistency. This is not something that you do today because you feel good and you're going to do it. It's something that you purposely take the time to do it every day, a little bit at a time. You can start with one minute or even 30 seconds, then increase it and be consistent and teach the children to be consistent, consistent at that. And that will allow them to build that resilience that we so crave and so need. Can ACEs be prevented? Like many diseases out there or many illness or many um, syndrome, yes, they can be prevented. And how can we prevent ACEs? Not all children who experience ACEs will have health problems and they will not experience negative impact either. There are ways that we can make it less likely because we interact with the kids in the school setting, even with our loved ones that we interact in our community, with our coworkers, with our PTA fellow um, members or colleagues. Um, we need to ensure that the children have a positive, a supportive, we can create supportive connections with them. If they don't have it at home, and we are in the community, we need to be that caring adult for that child. And we have to create some protective factors around them to help them to cope with the stress and help them to cope with challenges. We can promote families in school, like if we do the family nights, it's a great program. We can just be active in that community. We can educate, we can do one child at a time. And with that comes to mind, the, the song of um, Michael Jackson, um, we are the world and it was all the artists singing together. Um, we can make a difference one child at a time. We can create uh, a domino effect. And that's what we are here today. We have gone through some of us have gone through some experiences when, in our childhood. And that, as Shelly mentioned, it propels us to be our why and give us the, the energy to, in the, in the desire and the intention to fight for what we believe is right because we don't want other to come, to go through it the same way that we went through. I just wanna share with you guys that we all took the, the assessment he and our community, the um, Shelly, Michelle, and I, we took the assessment and we had different perspective. Shelly shared a little bit of her of hers. Mine, I, it was totally different. When I saw my first yes, I started to get nervous because like, oh my gosh. And that just, at that moment in time for me was a big deal. Maybe my, sc my score were not out there, however, but just to have the first, 
A yes, my first, my second yes. That was working out my mind. And then I realized that this is the reason why I'm doing this. This is the reason why I am so passionate about the kids because I don't want them to go through what I have gone through. And I know all of us are the same way. So when you are out there in our community, just think about what can, what can we create? What positive childhood experiences we can give, gift to people, to them? What is the gift that you can give them? And um, think about that and um, let that resonate deep inside of you. Why are you here in PTA? Like I said, create positive childhood experiences. We can create positive childhood experiences in a strengthen families, financial stability, promote social norms um, that protect against violence. And it's what we do in PTA. Help kids have a good start. Um, teach healthy relationship skills. And we do that when we do programs. Connect youth with activities and caring adults. So we do that. We have programs that touch those areas. Now knowing that it's more to what we do, it's a deeper meaning. So hopefully today, this workshop is gonna ignite you to rediscover your why. Um, we also can intervene um, to lessen immediate and long-term harms. We need to be cognizant of our children and be observant to, because sometimes they don't speak, but their actions will tell you a lot. Um, healthy childhood has benefits through life. And, and here we see the graphic in the left and the right-hand side of the graphic, we see that if, what could happen if we prevent ACEs. Fewer cases of depression, heart disease, and obesity. 44% reduction on what? In the number of adults with depression. Depression is one of the huge things, in, not just in America, in the world. And everything lingers from depression. They have 33% reduction in the number of adults who are I cannot read that. It's too small for me. My glasses are just failing me. Um, who are who smokes? 33% reduction of tobacco user, 24 to 27% reduction on people that have COP COPD, 16% reduction on lung disease, 50% reduction on the number of adults who cannot hold a job. So as we see, having a positive childhood, it goes also from areas to stages in a stages. And that's why we're here to create programs for that aspect. Okay, so uh, Asia pretty much got us into the program section. So I'm gonna make you guys work a little bit. So based on the infographic that's in front of you right now with those different things drop into the chat any programs that you can think of or that you've done or that you've seen that could possibly help any of those situations okay so when you look at the list when you look at the list you're looking at financial stability um protection against violence so anything that's like um kindness or anti you know anti-violence um, anti-bullying, um, help kids give a good start. So things that you can do to kind of start them off on the right page, um, healthy relationship, um, activities with caring adults and intervention. So any ideas that you guys have or that you've been able to do at your units, throw them in the chat. I'm going to go through some other ideas, but you know, just in case you have something that I haven't thought of, or maybe somebody else finds amazing, definitely go for it. So multitasking here with my screens. Okay. Okay. So for financial stability, uh, this one's a pretty easy one to come up with programs for. So like, so for example, I'm not going to read all of this, but we are going to share it. So that way, you know, you can, you would be able to see it. Um, but like for elementary, you can do like a financial literacy story time. You can organize sessions, focus on age appropriate financial literacy uh, themes. 
such as saving money, budgeting, needs versus wants, which I think even as adults, sometimes we have issues with. Um, mm -hmm. You can provide books and resources or even something as simple as if you're having um, a family night already and just sharing some printouts, you know, about some of these topics, that'll kind of slide some of that financial stability in there for the kids. Um, you can do financial workshops with the family. So you can reach out to like a local bank or something like that, have them come to the school and just do a financial night with the families so that they can kind of help them with their own budgets and, you know, planning and, you know, college, you know, cause that's a huge, huge financial, um, step for some of our families. You can do resource fairs where the different organizations that maybe will help with housing or food or clothing can come out and that way those families would be able to kind of at least be introduced to some of the resources that are available in your communities. Back to school events. Uh, a lot of places are able to give out backpacks or school supplies or sneakers um, because those are the main things that when the kids come to school that, you know, you wouldn't think so, but a sneaker really, really matters. Um, making sure that they're comfortable when they're walking into those, the schools and that they're ready to learn really, really makes a huge impact. Free family fun event, fa family events. So for example, you know, if you have the ability to provide your events free where you don't necessarily need, um, you know, any money to, to join in, please consider doing that. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a Title I school. You can be at a non-Title I school and still have families that are financially having some difficulties, especially now with the way everything is. Um, so having those free events that they can attend may, really goes a long way. Uh, food pantry support, because a lot of our kids are really struggling right now with, with food and all that stuff. Uh, middle school entrepreneurship day. So you can host like an entrepreneur day where they can kind of come up with like a business or something like that. You can have somebody come out, teach them different concepts, pricing, marketing, managing profits, all that fun stuff. You can do a reality fair simulation. This is actually something that we do at Seminole County. Our district does it though, not the PTA. They have this program um, where the kids get to experience like financial adulthood. So they have to figure out the, they're given um, assigned income levels based on whatever job they're given. And then they have to figure out, OK, you know, what decisions I need to make for housing, transportation, um, groceries, expenses. You know, like if you're not making that much money and you have to pay rent, like, can you per can you buy the filet mignon? Probably not. You know what I mean? Like you have to kind of make your just make your decisions. So it's a really, really good program. And it's really cute to see the kids uh, because they are super surprised that. Like, for example, electricity does not just come with the house. So you have to actually pay for that. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and then high school, you can do like a career exploration um, events, like reach out to different businesses to come out and share, you know, the different types of professions that there are, have speakers, uh, college and financial aid information sessions are always good. Um, try to make sure that you're looking at your population so that you know if you need translations, you know, so if you need um, Spanish speaking uh, speakers, or if you need to do something else to make sure that you're being inclusive, make sure that you are paying attention to that. Scholarship workshops. Um, obviously, you know, our kids always need more money for scholarships. A lot of our PTAs do, like our high school PTAs do have scholarships for our, our units, um, for our students. But, you know, even something as simple as like helping them search for 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 scholarships and sharing that on social media or doing a session where you help them write essays. Um, and that's not something that you necessarily have to do as a PTA. You can invite someone else, you know, invite a college professor to come in and teach the kids how to do that stuff. Interview skills um, and preparation. Like, you know, a lot of our kids are trying to go and get a job and, you know, not everyone knows how to interview. So it's a great idea to kind of just have them, you know, just give them the opportunities and will you get 500 kids show up to these events? No. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can reach some of those, that's major. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I know that I did kind of do the financial just because I really like, really like the financial part because it really impacts so many different parts of the, the kids' lives. But 
Um, this is kindness stuff. So like elementary, you can do bullying prevention, cultural diversity celebrations, parent workshops um, that kind of explain like, you know, recognizing the signs of, of bullying and promoting social skills at home. Uh, middle school, you can do bullying prevention workshops, digital safety. A lot of our kids are, you know, using the digital, digital stuff and there's a lot of cyber bullying. So you can kind of go through all of that stuff. Uh, the FBI does a great presentation on that. Kindness challenges. So you can do challenges or initiatives where students are encouraged to perform acts of kindness towards their peers. Um, you can do kindness signs, you matter bracelets. High school, you know, youth leadership and advocacy, just empower the students. I think at the end of the day, it, when we can empower the students to not only advocate for themselves, but for each other, it really, really goes a long way. And then community partnerships for violence prevention. And good start. I just put a bunch of different things that you can do for that. I mean, I didn't separate it by grade level because it's kind of stuff that you can do across the board, like nutrition, education, you know, healthy snacks, physical activity initiatives, um, health and wellness fair, mental health awareness, hygiene education, substance abuse prevention. Like it's kind of, you know, that middle and high school, that's a good, good time to start for those. And then health and relationships. So you can do like guardian um, education workshops where you can focus on topics such as effective communication, conflict resolution, and fostering positive relationships, uh, healthy relationship uh, workshops. I know Safe House does one on dating where you can actually have a presentation about what's healthy and what's not healthy and what that looks like. Uh, a lot of our kids don't really necessarily know what's a healthy relationship. So that's a really good one to do. Uh, conflict resolution training. So you can reach out to a school guidance counselor or something like that and, you know, and have them model or practice or explain to the kids, not only the relationships with each other, but also with your parents. Like, you know, how should you be communicating with your parents and all that stuff? Um, guardian child bonding events for caring adults, uh, lunch with a loved one. You know, a lot of our PTAs do um, like muffins with mom or donuts with dad. And it's a really good idea to really start looking at being more inclusive. So doing like lunch with a loved one, as opposed to picking a specific person that has to attend that, because not all of our students have a mom or a dad, or, you know, some of them might be with grandma or some of them might be with an uncle or whatever. So you want to make sure that you are looking at your existing programs because these, I mean, I'm giving you ideas of different programs, but you can 100% look at an existing program that you have now at your school and just adjust it, just tweaking little things. So for example, trunk or treat, right? Most of our PTAs do trunk or treat. You can adjust that easily to be more inclusive to our families that do not have cars or maybe their cars don't look the greatest, so they don't want to bring them to school or they're embarrassed or whatever the case is, and do trunks and tables. So just make sure that there's tables set up and that the PTA has a couple of tables so that those parents don't feel, you know, like they're the only ones doing that. But you can easily adjust any program that you have to be more inclusive and to help with the ACEs um, and, and all of that stuff. So let me see. <clears throat> um, volunteer opportunities, you know, it's look at your board, make sure that you're being inclusive with your board. Um, if somebody wants to volunteer, give them a chance. This, you don't know what's going on in their personal life. You don't know, you know, if this might be the, their one chance of trying to work on that relationship or trying to be more active. So just try to make sure that you're open to volunteers, uh, free events. I always say free events because it's really, really important. Uh, guest speaker series, so you can invite psychologists, educators, community leaders um, to, to, to address different topics that relates to adolescent development, positive parenting practices, building supportive relationships with students. Um, I have a PTA that does, <clears throat> um, every year they do, in the beginning of the school year, they do an IEP and 504 binder event where 
they give out binders. They invite all the different um, families that have a child with IEP or 504. Um, and they just create their binders and they, they show them like, hey, like this is what you should put in the binder. They have um, people presenting like what is an IEP? What's an, a 504? What, does, what do they look like? What does it mean? Um, and it's really good. So like just look at your school community. And if you really look um, and are inclusive, you know, you'll be able to kind of pick up like what programs you need or what you can adjust in your existing programs to hit some of these spots. Um, and then intervention, look in your community. Our communities have so many different nonprofits and different organizations that are, you know, like zeroed in on specific um, subjects. So for example, Children's Cabinet, it is a amazing resource to go through and look at all the different organizations that impact our kids. And they are always willing to partner with you. Uh, you can reach out to NAMI for mental health presentations. You can reach out to Safe House for domestic um, abuse or relationship stuff. Reach out to your guidance counselors at your schools. They are always willing to present to the students or the families to kind of, you know, create that good environment at the schools. And reach out to your county PTAs because, I mean, some of our county PTAs have a lot of resources um, that we just kind of have rumbling around in our brain. Um, so definitely reach out if you have questions because that's always a good way to get um, guidance or even just a different perspective of what you can do to an existing program. Sorry, Thank that was you. a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. And before we go into the resources, uh, we have another um, kind of activity um, reserved for you guys, for all of us. And before we go into that activity, I wanna just, um, we're doing this because we want to provide you with the tools to help the schools and the community to work with more understanding and more and for us to be more supportive in regards to what is happening with ACES. Um, we can partner with the local units, with the school, with the teachers, with everyone in the community to, and we can teach them, we can train them in those programs that we develop for the community, how to recognize when an adult is stressed, when a child going through a stressful moment. And we as PTA, we have the upper hand because we have the caring heart to really help our community. And we can just be very proactive to foster and supportive um, relationship, promoting healthy lifestyle, ensuring that everybody have access to mental health um, resources. And with that, I want to do with us just a little one minute, and I know the time is running, one minute mindful exercise. And I want us to take a deep breath because we have absorbed so much information. And I want us to take a moment and just um, close our eyes and take three deep breath, inhale, and then think of all the stuff that you want to let go and then release. And as you release, you release in those things that you want to let go. And we're only going to do it for one minute and I'm going to time it. So let's um, do it to start our self-practice of self-care and mindfulness. So let's take a deep breath. Let's close our eyes. We're gonna inhale and we're gonna think of the stuff that we, how the day went, things that we wanna release. We're gonna hold it to the count of three, one, two, three, and we're gonna release. We're gonna take another inhale, inhaling everything that we wanna change. We're gonna hold it for the count to three, one, two, three, and we're gonna release. And the last one inhaled, we're gonna inhale, we're gonna hold it to the count of three. And then when, when we do the release, we're gonna do it more long, elongated, like we really getting all this out of us. So let's take a deep breath, close our eyes, inhale, hold it, one, two, three, and then release. how that feels. Thank you. And now we're gonna do a two minutes video. 
to about ACES. So do we have it ready, Shelly? I had it ready. So as soon as I find the tab. Okay, yep. Let me switch over. Let me know if you can't hear it. Adverse childhood experiences, called ACEs, are stressful or traumatic experiences that occur in childhood, like violence, abuse, and growing up in a family with substance use or mental health problems. Can you hear it? Yes. You can hear it? I was I able to hear it. Paused. I was able to hear it, though. You were able to hear it? Okay, because I don't hear anything, but I'll play it then. When a caring adult or supportive environment doesn't soften those adverse experiences, or when they are ongoing or overwhelming, they can lead to a prolonged activation of our stress response called toxic stress. Think of toxic stress like this. Our bodies were designed to escape predators quickly. Imagine you're walking through the woods and you see a bear. Your brain signals your body to release stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. Your heart begins to pound and your body prepares you to either fight or run from the bear. And that's useful if you're in the forest and there's a bear. The problem is when children face threats to their physical and emotional safety. And this system is activated over and over and over again. What was meant to protect you begins to do the opposite and becomes damaging to your health, creating long-lasting wear on your body and brain. Children are especially vulnerable to the effects of ACEs and toxic stress because their brains and bodies are still developing. The toxic stress from ACEs and other adversities such as poverty, racism, discrimination, and natural disasters can disrupt the normal functioning of vital bodily systems. Simply put, toxic stress can result in long-term mental and physical health conditions. Not only that, but the effects of ACEs can be passed from parent to child for generations through the biological changes and behaviors associated with ACEs and toxic stress. A person with four or more ACEs is twice as likely to suffer from heart disease, cancer, and stroke four times as likely to develop depression, and 12 times as likely to attempt suicide. The good news is that safe, stable relationships and environments and other interventions such as physical and mental health support can reduce the risk of ACEs leading to toxic stress and stress-related health conditions. To learn more, visit www.osg.ca.gov. Thank you. With that, um, we have the links for the video and more videos in regards to ACEs. Um, we encourage you to look at it. We have prepared a booklet with a more in depth with everything that we went today because we know that all this information um, is gonna be hard to remember. And that's why we have it ready available for you guys if you need it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask any questions. If you need a PowerPoint presentation, you can email us um, mental.health at uh, mentalhealth at floridapta.org. Thank you, Asia. While we're waiting on that, this um, presentation along with every other Road to Success presentation we've done for the last two years or more, um, is on the Florida PTA website. Just go to floridapta.org and put in Road to Success and you can see the recordings. This will be added within the next, uh, probably after Easter, but I'll send it right away. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Trying to see if you had any messages. Great presentation. It, very, it really was. And now since I don't see any questions, I will invite our president, Carolyn Nelson Goder, to tag us out. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry I joined you a little bit late. And Karen, thanks for opening us up. Uh, that was a great presentation full of information. 
helpful not only to our students, but to our parents as well, because we know what goes on in a household affects everyone in the household and ultimately affects everyone in your child's classroom because none of us lives in a silo. So thanks to the committee for submitting not only great information, but great resources uh, for all of us to be able to access. Um, I look forward to you joining us for all of our future Road to Success sessions uh, that are equally as good as this one. As Karen said, uh, they are posted on the Florida PTA website. A uh, couple of reminders, don't forget to register for Florida PTA's Leadership Convention coming up July 18th through the 21st. Uh, we'll have lots of great information, great speakers. There are ancillary events such as our leader, um, our DEI luncheon, DEIJ luncheon, as well as our awards and recognition luncheon. Uh, if you haven't put in your awards application, you need to get that done. We wanna make sure that we represent all of the wonderful work that you were doing and that we recognize those of you who did exceptional work. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and I'll give it back over to the committee. Is there any questions in regards to the presentation or any suggestion, anything that you might wanna share with us? No, no questions. Do we have any questions in the chat, Karen? No questions, a lot of comments. I put in the uh, links to the chat of what Carolyn was uh, referencing. Um, there were additional ideas when you said, put your ideas in the chat. I didn't know if y'all wanted to share those out loud for those yes, who come please. back and listen to the video. Um, P National PTA Healthy Minds and Active Minds mm -hmm. is a great presentation. Uh, awards programs and reflections. We were talking about how we can increase the positive ACEs, mm -hmm. the positive things for children. Family activities, creating a wellness family night for the kids and parents to come and learn mindfulness or even chair yoga. I need to do that if anybody knows about that in Seminole County. <laughs> um, <laughs> bingo night, reading, picnics, and paperbacks. Ed Fed Financial Fair. You can, they have that online and they offer to come in in person. They're one of our great Florida PTA sponsors. Uh, and look at the PTA mental health resources. There are many resources online for national as well as at pta.org. New World's Reading has free books for K through five. And they'll also come to your school and do programs. We're going to have a road to success on that at the end of April. And um, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. And then if anyone has programs that they are trying to figure out what they can do to adjust, because you don't necessarily have to come up with a new program. You can just adjust an existing program to be more inclusive um and make sure that you are doing that support that our kids that are dealing with aces need um definitely reach out to the committee because we're always always willing to help and give ideas thank you all i think we thank will in in the event at twelve fifty nine with perfect timing <laughs> thank you everyone for coming thank you Bank. All right, thank you, ladies. The rest on.